Good morning, everyone. Who here has a tattoo? How about more than one? <laughs> well, the very few of us are part of the 45 million people estimated to have tattoos in the United States. Body adornment is very prominent today. People cover their bodies in patterns, symbols, and images. In Albuquerque, there are over 15 tattoo parlors in the immediate vicinity of UNM. And that's only a fraction of the 21,000 tattoo parlors estimated to exist in the United States as of December last year. Artists decorate the skin like a canvas. The ink marks our poor choices and decisions, our hopes and dreams, our life-changing moments, and worldviews, each meaning varies widely. This tradition has spanned over 5,000 years, recorded on artifacts and skin of past peoples, and on the people who walk among us today. <coughs> this is the story of ink. Warning, mummies. Tatao, the root of the English word tattoo, is an ancient Polynesian art that began, which begins around the age of 12. Identity, personality, and life story were recorded on the skin, including rites of passage, reflection of spirit, journey, and individual traits. Tattoo is defined as the act or practice of marking the skin with permanent patterns, pictures, legends, etc. by making pictures in it and inserting pigments. Using needle-sharp implements, people across the world transfer colors using pricking patterns. One of the earliest possible examples of tattooing comes from the Kukuteni culture, located in what is now Romania and Ukraine. Twenty elaborately incised ceramic figurines communicate ideas from the body surfaces. Archaeologist Douglas Bailey has associated the markings with the Neolithic pot, a technological innovation which may be a metaphor for the body. The process of engraving may have been seen as tattooing. <coughs> Meanwhile, in Egypt, tattoos discovered on high status females across the breasts, eyes, abdomen, and, uh, uh, and uh, they resemble the geometric patterning of blue fine sculptures. In some cases, the goddess Bess, associated with childbirth and childbirth, is seen on the upper thigh. The relationship between Bess and the placement of geometric patterning hints at a therapeutic role during pregnancy and childbirth. The almost exclusive practice of tattooing on Egyptian women supports a connection between permanent ink and femininity. The oldest case of tattooing on human remains is Otzi, the Iceman discovered in the Carolian Alps, frozen in a glacier. Over 50 tattoos in the forms of lines and crosses cover his skin. Um, but each of these was placed in an area typical of, of strain-induced de degeneration by rubbing charcoal into small incisions, very similar to modern acupuncture. Um, common places, as you can see in the image, are the lower back, the Achilles heel, ankles, wrists, and knees. According to Dr. Andy Conlon, O.C. suffered from arthritis, and it's quite possible his tattoos were therapeutic. The Pazarik culture has some of the most spectacular tattoos in the archaeological record. Tattoos were considered <coughs> helpful in the afterlife, helping the family you know, find each other again in death. Pazariks used animal imagery to represent their thoughts and define their position in society. The mummy known as the Princess of Uka was found preserved in permafrost in the Altai Mountains of Siberia. The tattoo on her left shoulder, as seen, is a composite mythological creature, a deer with a griffin's beak and Capricorn antlers with additional griffin heads spiraling out of it. Below is a sheep with a snow leopard beside its feet. On her left thumb is the outline of an animal's body, and a deer's head with large antlers is on her right wrist. Princess Uka was about 25 years old when she died. According, and this is reflected by the absence of tattoos beyond her arms. According to Dr. Natalia Polozman, the more tattoos there were on the body, the longer it meant the person had lived and the higher rates in society they held. Found on the same plateau as the princess was a male warrior with a very decorated set of um, arms and torso a mountain sheep with a griffin's beak and horns, a winged snow leopard, a fish among many others. The combination of predator and prey joins the lower and middle worlds together on the skin. Dr. Polozmath also points out that the left shoulder appears to be where the first tattoo was placed. 
since all of the mummies discovered with a single tattoo were on the left shoulder, much like today. During the 1870s, the Ainu, once renowned for their delicate, intricate tattoos on their face and arms, were banned from body modification by the Japanese government. <coughs> Practice of tattooing began long before, possibly as far back as the Jamon culture. Obsidian is abundant on the island, or possibly the incision tool of choice. Earthenware, uh, earthenware figures have engravings on the face and, um, and body, particularly around the mouth, eye, and, and arms, similar to the Ainu ink today. The last fully tattooed Ainu woman died in 1998. Those who remain with any ink are possibly the last practitioners of a several thousand year old tradition. As early as the 9th century, China recorded mentions of tattooing of written works. The, the Yoyang Zazu describes tattoos as a mark of punishment or slavery, militaristic, figurative, textual, and a spatial abundance. In the case of ornament and decorative records, these do not say if they were received voluntarily or as a personal choice. They simply say that they ornament. Though different words are used to describe them, tattoo-bearing individuals are where we're stigmatized as impure, deviant, and uncivilized. Body markings are seen as barbaric, a sign of ostracism and defilement of the pure form given to one by their parents. A story from Rahanshi Wise One speaks of the barbaric tribes south of the Yangtze River. <coughs> the Yu people, one of these groups, had a custom to cut off their hair and tattoo their bodies in red and green to ward off dragons. Their culture integrated tattooing as a survival mechanism, so to speak and their Chinese neighbors deemed it barbaric, and even though they were equally intelligent. An anecdote describes the Yue's envoy's visit to Jing. Since these people were barbarians, an official of Jing requested that the Yue wear a hat in order to have audience with the king of Ju in a civilized land. The Yue envoy countered this by asking how it would be if any Jing visiting their city had to slice off their nose, be branded tattooed, and their hair cut if the person wanted an audience. Immediately, the king of Jing came out and an audience was granted. <clears throat> when does a worldwide tradition of humanity cross the line to primitivism? Modern primitivism was coined by Fakir Musafar, saying that it basically means that a non-tribal person responds to primal urges and does something with the body. A paper by Daniel Rosenblatt describes modern primitivism as a culture movement where people take traditions of their ancestors to explore the self through body modification. Primitive traditionally describes previous social orders which globalization does not support. This can be related back to colonialism and religion, attempting to put in place an order of self-respect where the body is a temple in pure birth. Purity is lost when the body is altered from your creator's ideal. If the body was to be inked, it would have been inked at birth. To move past the primitive realm is to accept the present as progress rather than regression. Since the primitive lacks societal, societal order, it cannot progress to a higher state of existence. Prior to the 1960s, people would walk into a tattoo parlor and select something off of the wall. Designs were not interconnected and had no consideration as art in Western society. In the 1960s, artists changed in San Francisco. The middle class began tattooing out of the hippie movement and the slow and growing awareness of Japanese full body tattoos. Tattoo artist Lyle Tuttle visited Samoa where he was respected for his full body work. His knowledge of tattooing integrated him into society and with the elders. He assumed a traditional role in the community that transcended linguistic and cultural barriers. In our current globalized society, ink is either adored or shunned. Many workplaces continue to frown upon body modification. Imposed dress codes hide an individual's participation in the global artistic tradition. The practice has persisted for millennia. Whether ink is a spiritual activity or a form of identity, the art of tattoo is not going anywhere. With time, traditions change, but one thing's for sure, nothing new is happening. Tattoos are not limited to the sinful or the powerful. They exist among all groups and all social classes and in all cultures. The desire to showcase permanent body modifications is in the human being. It's a part of humanity. 
So should present societies judge ink negatively or accept and learn about an ink individual's life by using their skin just as researchers do for those in the past? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. 